What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we are checking out the brand new Samsung Galaxy A55. Now, I feel like year after year, this is the Samsung phone people get most excited about, and for good reason. The A50-somethings have always been stellar, well-rounded devices with great specs. They seem nearly as good as the $800 S-series phones that Samsung would prefer that you buy, but this phone is like half the price, and the last couple of years especially, with the A52 and A52S, the A53, and last Last year's A54, people took notice, decisively buying those phones instead of the S series. This year's A55 isn't drastically different from those previous A50 somethings. There are a few upgrades and changes I'll definitely talk about, and if you've been holding on to one of those older A50 somethings, perhaps this is the upgrade you've been waiting for. But the biggest change with the A55 this year is actually not coming to the US, which suggests to me that maybe Samsung is finally fed up with everyone buying a phone like this instead of their super expensive S series flag. Ships. That bold assertion aside, you'll still be able to buy this phone if you want, from places like Amazon or other third-party retailers, just not from Samsung directly or from any of the wireless carriers you might be using. But I'm sort of getting ahead of myself here. Let's first unbox this phone so I can show you what all you get if you do end up buying it, and then I'll talk about all the dirty details. So oddly enough, the box this phone ships in is slim, so hint hint, there's not much inside as per usual, but it's bigger than a lot of the A-series phone boxes I already have, and that's because the phone itself is a lot bigger this year. Pulling back the tabs and sliding off the lid, the first thing you get is the phone itself, obviously, and if you didn't know where to look, you might think that's all that's inside here, but no, there is that usual cardboard packet of accessories that's hiding in the lid. And your accessories include the SIM ejector tool, a fat stack of paperwork featuring every language in existence, and a USB-C to USB-C cable for charging. With that stuff out of the way, here is the new A55 once again. I of course opted for what Samsung calls Awesome Lilac, a sort of light purple. You can also snag this phone in some other awesome colors, navy, ice blue, and lemon. And as far as pricing and availability, let me finish my griping about that since it's sort of kind of the most important thing about this phone. The full retail price of the A55 is around 450 US dollars, similar to last year, but I'm going off of British pounds and Australian dollars since there's technically no official US price for this phone. But you can find it on Amazon for between $430 and $450 right now, and there are plenty of third-party retailers online that are settling into that price range as well. There are a couple configuration options for this phone, 128 gigabytes of storage with 8 gigs of RAM or 256 gigabytes of storage with 8 or 12 gigs of RAM, so when you're shopping around, just make sure you take note of the storage and RAM options so you know what you're buying. And if you want to shop around, I'll leave some links to where you can get this phone at its cheapest current price down below in the video description. So something I alluded to earlier, the A55 is bigger than, well, all of its previous predecessors. It's a 6.6 inch device this year. That's the screen size corner to corner, and you also get a better screen to body ratio with slimmer, even borders all the way around. That means that in the hand, the phone doesn't actually feel that much bigger. It's a few millimeters taller and wider, and actually more than 10 grams heavier, thanks to a more premium build. More on that in a second. But I think most people are used to and generally just prefer these big phones. Around back, the A55 carries over the slightly nicer build from last year. It has a glossy Gorilla Glass rear cover, which feels nice and looks great. It's not as holographic as the product pictures make it seem though. To get that rainbow effect, you sort of have to shine a bright light directly on it. I think some of the other A-series phones have a more striking color shift to them, and this light purple is about the 87th different shade of purple Samsung has offered. It's very dull by comparison. But what's really new this year is that the A55 now has a brushed aluminum frame. I know some people will hate this, but peel off those stickers and you'll see the nice fit. 
finish. This is what adds the extra weight, and I think it's the finishing touch that really makes this phone look and feel more premium than ever. I mean, I think this phone has a nicer build than the S23 FE, for example, and holding it next to the new S24, you absolutely can't tell a difference, since they're now literally the exact same materials all the way around. Taking a quick look at all the rest of the physical bits, there's nothing on the left side there. On the right, familiar volume and power buttons. Up top, a dual SIM and SD card tray. So on the one hand, yay, expandable storage is still offered on this phone. So you can double or triple the storage capacity for cheap by just popping in an SD card, but you'll have to choose between that or a secondary SIM card. And you don't have eSIM on this phone either. But hey, I'll still take this as opposed to not having anything. On the bottom of the phone, the USB-C port is there in the middle alongside the main loudspeaker, a couple of microphone holes, and a big empty space where a headphone jack could could be. Up at the top, the secondary speaker is hidden in the earpiece above the selfie camera, and around back, a triple lens camera setup that we'll test out in just a bit. Now, aside from the screen itself being bigger, the screen specs are basically the same as last year, so your viewing experience is otherwise unchanged. The 6.6 inch screen on this phone is a Super AMOLED 120Hz panel, coming in at the full HD 2400 by 1080 resolution. Technically, it has a lower pixel density since it is a bigger sized screen, so only 390 pixels per inch, but I say that in jest. The screen is plenty sharp for its size. The AMOLED panel is also bold and colorful. This is literally the same sort of setup you get on Samsung's flagships after all, so what you're seeing here is what you might otherwise pay nearly twice as much for. And the cherry on top is the 120Hz refresh rate, which obviously makes the phone feel extra fluid and responsive. This screen also gets just as bright as last year, maxing out at a thousand nits of peak brightness, which Okay, if you want to make the argument that this isn't truly a flagship display, that's the main difference, but compared to the A series of years past, it's still a lot better. There's glare, but it's not terrible, and in fact, it should even be a little better because the front display glass on this phone is now Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. So sort of a half-step upgrade if you still wanted something to improve the viewing experience, say outdoors or in an otherwise bright or glare-prone environment. Overall, and I say this every year, the viewing experience on this phone is basically what makes this phone 100% worth the money. It is really no different than what Samsung tries to sell for 800 or 900 bucks on an S-series phone, and I think it's what a vast majority of people immediately and fully appreciate on this tier of A-series. Also, underneath the display is your fingerprint sensor for unlocking, and this is still just the old school optical sensor that's been on these phones for, well, forever. It's not the fancy flagship ultrasonic sensor, so it's not like super quick. It's only kind of quick, and it still misses from time to time. You always have to keep your thumb down for an extra fraction of a second, but it's fine, and paired with face unlock, you can definitely get into this phone fast enough. For your out loud listening pleasure, Samsung stuck with the stereo speaker setup, which is great. You've got that bigger speaker at the bottom, of course, and the secondary speaker in the earpiece slit. And I've always felt that these speakers sound best at like 80% volume. Beyond that, they still get a bit muffled and distorted since they're not really premium or special in any way. But here's a quick sound sample so you can hear them for yourself. <laughs> So when it comes to specs and performance, the good news is Samsung did upgrade the processor. The bad news, at least for some of you, is that it's once again an Exynos chip, Samsung's own brand of components, and I know not everyone is a fan. The A55 is powered by the new Exynos 1480, paired to something I'm unfamiliar with, the also new Xclipse 530 GPU. Here are the Geekbench scores for that processor, and you'll notice I have the A55 with 8GB of RAM, so keep that in mind. Of course, it remains to be seen whether this Exynos processor is 
may be better improved in the efficiency and heat management departments compared to what Samsung delivered in years past that irked so many customers, but hopefully for a vast majority of people, this phone will be a perfectly powerful device for the everyday stuff. It ships with Android 14 and One UI 6.1, and while it doesn't get the flagship AI features, the phone is going to feel fresh and up to date for four more years with major Android updates and five total years of security patches. With that timeline of support, I like to say that this phone is a decent long-term investment in a way, and I think previous A-series owners can attest to that. This is a phone you can absolutely keep for three or four years for sure without missing out on anything software, app, or update related, and honestly, you can probably go well beyond that if you want. This isn't some super limited Samsung experience either. I mean, yeah, it isn't a DeX device, but besides that, for 95% of people, this is the same Samsung and Android experience you'd otherwise have on something twice as expensive. And I think that's another big reason why so many people flock to this phone year after year. Something I was surprised to see with this phone was the same sized 5000 milliamp battery capacity. Don't get me wrong, I think that's generally quite solid. And it's the sort of phone that, for more casual daily usage, could be a nearly two-day device for some folks. But it's the same size battery as the last few years which wouldn't be a deal breaker, except this phone is bigger, with a bigger screen and theoretically a bigger form factor, with still no headphone jack inside, so there's gotta be space for a bigger battery, right? There's also still no wireless charging, but the 25 watt wired fast charging will juice this thing up to 100% in about an hour. Just make sure you go out and get a 25 watt wall plug yourself, since Samsung refuses to supply you with one. Last but not least, let's briefly touch on the camera setup, and I honestly hate to just gloss over this, but really not much changed this year compared to last year. The triple lens setup around back is once again a 50 megapixel main lens, there's a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 5 megapixel macro lens. The selfie camera is also basically the same 32 megapixel lens, and inside the camera app you'll find pretty much the same set of features and shooting modes you've likely been utilizing for the past few years already. Now, I honestly don't have anything negative to say. I think the A50-somethings have really had great camera setups over the last three or four years now, and if you aren't the 1% of people making movies, documentaries, or anything else like that with your smartphone, then what you get here is plenty. There's 4K video recording, there's a 50 megapixel shooting mode for pictures, there's a dozen camera features you can utilize, and useful stuff like enhanced video stabilization. I'm sure the upgraded processor and continued software improvements allow for some better image processing after the shot is snapped, but I would like to see the end of the macro lens for sure, and I'd also like to see some better zoom capabilities. I mean, the difference between what you get here versus the flagships now is just so vast, so there are some improvements to be made still with the camera setup on these phones, but I suppose, considering the intended customer for this device, what's offered here will still meet the needs of most people. Overall, the A55 is another minor iterative upgrade to an otherwise solid mid-tier Samsung device. The difference this year is that, at least here in the US, Samsung doesn't actually want you buying it. I'm sure they'd much rather try and sell you an S24, or even the S23 FE, or maybe one of the cheaper devices that probably have higher margins with less specs. But for the rest of the world, and those of you who go out of your way to get what you want, the A55 seems to once again be one of the best mid-tier Android devices this year, but I'm looking forward to confirming that in the coming weeks as I continue to test this phone out. What do you guys think of the A55? Is this a device you've been waiting for? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video, though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. I'll see you guys later.